Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Adele Healy. I'm the Head of School of Health and Science in Dundalk Institute of Technology, and I'd like to start by introducing the project team. My name is Akin Luluakanti. I'm from IT Sligo. I'm Ronan Bree from Dundalk IT as well. I'm Dina Brazel. I'm from IT Carroll. Lula Harding, I'm from IT. Where are we going? Okay. So um, this project is looking at um, practical assessment in the science and health disciplines. And as you can see from um, my colleagues here today, this project involves four institutes of technology. Institutes of technology place a major emphasis on practical skills, particularly in the science and health disciplines. Um, I'd just like to say that some of my colleagues can't be here today, again because of exam boards, but I think we have a good representation from the project team, and we're actually going to take a team approach, and a part in the pun, in that everyone is going to speak very briefly here this morning, okay? So, what is the project about? I suppose really, as I said, practical, the practical element of science and health programmes is very important. The four institutes that are involved, the four schools that are involved, all have a very similar profile in that they provide a range of programmes in both the applied science and in the health discipline. And when we talk about health, we're talking about nursing, midwifery, sports science. When we talk about applied science, we're talking about pharmaceutical science, bioscience, environmental science, veterinary nursing. So a very broad sweep of programmes, but the common link being that they all have a practical component. So I suppose our first question is, how can practical classes be designed to reduce over-assessment, develop essential knowledge, skills and competence? And secondly then, how can we use digital technologies to promote assessment for learning in practical settings? The project is made up of a very multidisciplinary team. Here today we have representatives at head of school level, teaching and learning units, and lecturers who are involved in the frontline delivery within our four schools. We have a number of key stakeholders. We have the project team. We have the academic teams within the four colleges that are going to be involved in the project as it progresses. The senior management team, the heads of school in the four <coughs> colleges are leading the project. We also have close links with industry partners, with our learning and teaching units with our library and our IT departments and also very importantly the students play a key part in this project and we'll explain that to you to the presentation as to where we listen to the student voice. There's three phases to the project. We essentially commenced the project in January and I suppose we have nearly completed phase one already and today we're going to talk about that in some more detail. So essentially the first phase was essentially to look at what are we doing at the moment, what's going on in the literature, what's the best practice out there. So we'll tell you a little bit this, morning, this afternoon about the literature review which is um, giving us information about the international best practice in this field. As I said, the student voice is very important, so our, in our interaction with students and how we've surveyed students will we'll give you some insight into that also. A big part of this is establishing a peer network of academics in the four institutes who are all involved in delivering uh, practical programmes in science and health. So a big part of the initial phase of the project has, to be to, has been to bring all of those um, uh, uh, staff together, essentially to establish the network. And in the latter stages of the pro uh, sorry, in, in the next phase of the project, we will be involving our industry partners in a more significant manner. The next phase of the project that we will, we will enter into starting in semester is to then um, identify, uh, on, the, on the basis of the output from phase one, we'll have identified technologies which we want to evaluate and pilot across the four colleges, and we'll evaluate that and essentially assess their impact, and in the final phase of the project then, we will further disseminate the learnings for the project to the wider community, both nationally and internationally. So what we've done so far is we've established the governance of the project. We've set up a project steering committee, which is made up of all of the different stakeholders that I mentioned to you there, and we have met on a regular basis, both using face-to-face -face meetings and also using virtual means such as Skype. We've established a student advisory committee which is essentially a group of students in each of the four colleges who are going to form the major, I suppose, student voice that will inform the project. We've established a peer network of academics who are going to be the people who are going to be evaluating the technologies in the next phase of the projects. We've approximately between six to ten academics um, identified across the four institute of technology. What's significant about this is that they're from a wide range of disciplines, both the science and the health side, and that's a really important, I think, output from the project. We have identified which employers or industry we want to liaise with, and the next phase of the project will be to speak with them in a more detailed manner. And we've carried out a baseline report looking at what is the practical assessment techniques already ongoing in the four colleges.
We've carried out a detailed review of best practices on practical assessment in the science and health disciplines, and my colleague Ronan will talk about that in a few minutes. We've carried out student surveys in two of the four schools, um, IT Sligo and Dundalk Institute of Technology, and Akin will talk about that in a few minutes. We got ethical approval to carry out those surveys, and the surveys will be carried out in the other two partners in the autumn. We have scoped out the industry survey, and we plan to have a project workshop next Monday, which is something that we hadn't envisaged, but it's, it's, we think, a very good output of the project that has developed as we've evaluated our progress over the last few months. So I'm going to hand over to Akin, who will talk about the student survey now. Okay, thanks. As um, Idel has already said, student voice is extremely important in this, in this um, project. So we got um, Etika approver in two of the um, IOTs in Dundalk and um, IT Sligo. And uh, the survey is a combination of uh, TIC and open-handed questions. Um, what we did was to pilot, was to, first of all, to pilot um, the, the survey with the student um, representative before um, implementation. Um, Sligo IT and um, Dundalk IT, we have already done ours. The other, the other colleges, we do theirs in, in, in September. Um, we decided to go for the paper survey so that we can get um, a very good um, success rate in students feeling it. We, we went into, into their classes to do, to do all of these things, and we had 55% um, success um, rate. The next uh, thing that we want to do is just to um, go ahead and do it in the other um, ITs. Yeah, I'm going to hand you over to Renan. To do Thanks, Akeem. So, as Edel mentioned, we really wanted to engage with the literature to see what was there, try to identify best practice that was, and be, have an evidence-based solution moving forward. And as we did, we really focused on assessment, but what we also found was that the format and the design of these practical sessions um, are critically important. Uh, we need to create a powerful learning environment, essentially, in that practical sessions and try and migrate from an expository style, which is quite uniform in, uh, in many practical settings, to a more inquiry-based one. And I really like this quote from Gunstone and Champagne. It's, it's nearly 30 years old, but uh, minds on as well as hands on with regards to the design of, of these strategies. In, with regards to assessment and feedback, we try to look at exploring alternatives to the kind of uniform ways that are in place. We wanted to try and, even with feedback, introduce feedback, review time slots uh, and dialogue, create dialogue as Elizabeth Carnell has, has highly recommended. So the small boxes at the, in the middle and the bottom row are just some areas we've identified. For example, pre-practical preparation, getting people prepared for these practical sessions, putting them in context, making sure they're aware why a practical session is occurring and why it's being performed in such a, a particular way. Uh, it, creating that in, in context in combination with quizzes and so on. We could do those to get them prepared coming in rather than just reading text. Video was one thing we really wanted to incorporate and the literature backs that up, that customized videos before, during and even after the labor laboratory or uh, clinical skills session can be very beneficial for students. We, uh, the literature does recommend putting in virtual labs, but really it's complementing the system. And our student engagement systems back that up, or sessions back that up. The students don't really want virtual labs on their own. They really see them as a complementary resource to the real thing. The literature highlights practical reporting that we need to reduce over assessment and change the way that practical reports are written. Instead of the normal headings that we ask questions in the headings, what can you claim, what evidence do you have to support this, that makes the students think about what they have to process in the report rather than introduction, method, results, discussion, so on. We have, uh, the literature would highlight self-peer exemplar assessment activities to try and develop metacognitive development. The use of electronic reporting, so e-portfolios and ELN, or electronic lab notebooks, instead of the normal paper-based systems. And finally, one other element we came across quite, quite often is this introduction of digital badges to recognize practical skills, both in science laboratories, but also in clinical skill settings that would recognize the, the, the competencies that have gained. So I really like that quote that uh, a lot of the displays use, earn, issue, and display. So I tried to just get some thematic areas to show you that from quizzes, video, engagement and collaboration, practical clinical skills, and electronic reporting and feedback. From the student engagement sessions we've, we've had, and from the literature, we've been able to identify quite a lot of technology, technology tools that we can implement to try and support those thematic areas there. So I'd just like to pass over to Dina, next colleague. Good afternoon. Um, 
Ronan, myself and Akeem, we're representing the academics in this programme, so it's wonderful to have management supporting us. So because um, Adele is management, she actually, I persuaded her, uh, the team, we persuaded her to present at EdTech, which was held last week. And for Akeem, Ronan and myself, we have a very high teaching load and we can have some of the ALs would have 18 hours contact, so we would have about 16 because we're a bit more senior. However, we don't have opportunities to meet other colleagues, and often in our own institutions we may not know what's going on. So this was a fantastic opportunity to see what was happening and to see what the EdTech people were talking about. And it, we, 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 got, we had to submit an abstract and particular um, talks were chosen, so it wasn't a given that we would be allowed to represent um, our project. So Adele was able to explain to the gathered group what exactly we were trying to do, and we got fantastic feedback from other people, and we just had made informal linkages, so we were able to now link in with other NDL, um, any other projects that are available, um, the Digital Champions, for example, we know exactly who the people are, um, we're on first name terms with them, and I think it's only been absolutely inspiring for us all. So I'm now going to hand over to our teaching and learning colleagues. Okay. Apologies. Apologies. So uh, I suppose uh, the, the, what's happening next Monday is a project workshop. Ronan and um, Dina have kind of told you what you've done so far. We've, we've identified, I suppose, what, what's out there in the literature. We've carried out a survey. We've identified which staff now want to be involved in evaluating the technologies going forward. So we thought it would be very useful to bring everyone together before the summer to see, well, where are we going now? So that it would be very much informed decision for the next phase of the project. I should have mentioned earlier that Dr. Michael Siri, ex-DIT and now the University of Edinburgh, has become part of the project in an advice capacity. So in this project workshop next week, we're going to have all of the academics, the peer network are coming together, all of the students from the four colleges are coming together. We're going to have presentations on the literature review that Ronan has just given to you there, and the academics who are in the front line who are going to be, I suppose, evaluating these technologies going forward are all going to give a kind of a short presentation. We're, going, we're calling it Stories from the Front Line. And Michael is going to give a keynote um, talk on his area of expertise, and we're going to finish up then with a breakout session or a group session, which will involve both the academics and the students together talking about what's the learning so far in the project and where is the project going. So that will bring us nicely into phase two. Now I'm going to hand over to Nuala. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. So um, I'm just going to look at two elements around national impact and evaluation. Uh, in terms of national impact, I suppose really already we're seeing a national impact. We've got four institutes of technology involved in this project across, you know, that are geographically uh, diverse. They're, you know, identifying and sharing best practice, etc. Um, we, we see this as being an opportunity to develop something that is scalable and that can be shared across the other institutes of technology, but also across higher education in general. You can see that we have, um, again, the, the, the positive idea of having these cross-disciplinary approaches and as somebody mentioned you know kind of reducing that silo fact effect that can even happen within a school of science because there's so many different areas uh, involved um, Listen to the student voice. I think we've shown evidence already. That's not just, it's not just a token gesture. We have involved students from the very start through engagement sessions, through the survey and also through the, the, the groups that we have set up to inform the project. And in terms of uh, framework, we do see this as a very positive um, approach, having a combination of a discipline area, learning, teaching, industry, etc. So we do see it as a potential model for future projects similar to this. In terms of evaluation, we were very strong at the start that we didn't see evaluation as a bolt-on exercise. We see it as, a, you know, we, we want to take a developmental approach, and there are examples already within the project of where we've adapted um, in order, uh, because we're, we're meeting uh, the needs, you know, that we've been informed about. So, for example, the student survey is one of those. We hadn't intended to do as an extensive a survey as, we, as has been undertaken. However, we see it being really positive in that the, the amount of data we will, will be collecting, particularly about how students use technology currently across the four institutes. The other one is the web, the, the workshop, which was mentioned. Again, that has become a very much a collaborative approach between students, between all of the partners. Um, 
In addition, we were, we were delighted to get uh, Dr. Michael Thierry, who was published in this area, who was published in terms of the use of technology, and who was published in particularly in terms of uh, adapting practical uh, teaching sessions. And finally, of course, we have our literature review, which is informing the process. And very finally, <laughs> I, know time, I know time is nearly up, so I will be really brief. Um, just in terms of how do we sustain it, this has been very important to us from the get-go. We never wanted simply to have little isolated pockets of innovation that didn't really go any further. So the top-down and bottom-up approach led by the heads of school, but working very much, um, taking advantage of activities that were going on on the ground, things lecturers were doing, are key to embedding good practice for us. We have a strong collaborative relationship and we're collaborating and engaging in continual dialogue with all stakeholders and that is very important. The fact that we're using a strong evidence base and we're building on existing good practice rather than reinventing the wheel hopefully will make the project more sustainable. We also have a strong focus on building capacity both among staff among those of us who are involved from, um, you know, from the non-lecturing sites, but also among students in developing assessment literacy. And within all the institutions uh, involved, we have, good, we, we have strong established CPD in the area of learning and teaching, which has already gone a long way to building capacity. We're also involved in other projects, other enhancement projects that are related to this. And there's been huge capacity built from them, which we're harnessing. So we're trying to harness what's there to move forward. As Nuala mentioned, the reflection and evaluation is ongoing, and again, hopefully, that will help to make this sustainable. And we are going to, at a wider level, we are already beginning to disseminate and to engage more widely with the wider sector. Um, so just to acknowledge the project team and all the institutions, as, as Adele mentioned, not everyone can be here today, but they're with us in spirit. <laughs> so we hope that this is the end of the beginning rather than the beginning of the end. And thanks very much for listening to us.